Welcome to RK Varsity Online Lectures. In this lecture, I am going to explain you one of the theories of capital structure that is net income approach. The net income approach argues that by including debt in a capital structure that is uh, by including debt in a finance mix of a company, the value of a firm will increase and overall cost of a capital will decrease. In the sense, the companies can benefit by using a debt in capital structure mix. Now I'll explain this concept with an example. Here is an example. Using the values given, you need to calculate the value of a firm using net income approach. The net income approach that is NI is also called as relevant theory. In the sense, the proponents of net income approach advocates that if debt is used in capital structure, two things will happen. One is value of firm will increase. Then second is overall cost of a capital will decrease. This happens because cost of debt is cheaper than cost of equity and uh, no taxes. Then there is a no change in earnings before interest and tax. So under these three conditions, the value of the firm will increase and overall cost of capital will decrease. Now we'll uh, see that MindGame expects a net operating income that is EBIT of 1 lakh and it has a 3 lakhs debt of 10%. The equity capitalization rate of the firm is 12%. Calculate the value of the firm. So your uh, value of the firm this equals to D plus S. D is market value of the debt and S is a market value of equity. Here market value of a debt is not given. So we consider debt as a book value that is uh, 3 lakhs and then we need to calculate the S that is market value of equity. Market value of equity this equals to earnings available to common shareholders upon equity capitalization rate. So your earnings available to common shareholders earnings available to common shareholders this equals to EBIT minus interest. So our EBIT is 1 lakh. This minus interest is 10% of 3 lakhs. So 3 lakhs on this 10%. So this equals to 30,000. So your earnings available to common shareholders is 70,000 and uh, equity capitalization rate is 12%. So this equals to 70,000 upon 0 0.12. So your value of uh, equity that is market value of equity is 70,000 upon 0 0.12. So this is 5,83,333. 5,83,333 is the value of S. So your value of a firm this equals to value of the debt that is 3 lakhs plus value of uh, equity that is 5,83,333. So this equals to 8 lakhs 83,333 is the value of the firm and here you also need to calculate the uh, overall capitalization rate. So in our case overall capitalization rate is KO this equals to cost of debt times value of debt upon value of the firm plus cost of equity times value of equity upon value of the firm. Your overall cost of capital equals to cost of debt that is a 0 0.10 times value of uh, debt that is 3 lakhs upon 8 lakhs 83,333 plus cost of equity that is 12 percent 0 0.12 times value of equity 5 lakhs 83,333 upon value of the firm that is uh, 8 lakhs 83,300 33. So this equals to 0 0.10 times 3 lakhs upon 8 lakhs 83,333. So 0 0.34 plus 0 0.12 times 5 lakhs 83,333 upon 8 lakhs 83,333. So 0 0.66. 0.1 times 0.34 plus 0.12 times 0.66. So 
so 11.32 that is 0.1132 or 11.32 is the KO overall cost of capital when debt is rupees 3 lakhs now we calculate for uh, scenario 2 where debt is rupees 4 lakhs in earlier case debt was 3 lakhs now debt is a 4 lakhs so first we calculate the ECS that is amount available to common stockholders this equals to EBIT minus interest so your EBIT is 1 lakh and which remains a constant so this minus your interest now will be 4 lakhs times 10 percent so this equals to 40,000 amount available to equity shareholders is 1 lakh minus 40,000 that is 60,000 and value of uh, equity is EACS upon cost of equity so this equals to 60,000 upon 0 0.12 so S equals to 5 lakhs. Now value of a firm, this equals to D plus S. Your uh, debt is 4 lakhs, whereas value of equity is 5 lakhs. This comes to 9 lakhs. Now if you observe in a previous case, your value of the firm is 8 lakhs 83,333 when the debt was 3 lakhs. So by increasing a debt from 3 lakhs to 4 lakhs, the value of a firm increase so this is one reason as uh, the assumptions what we made about uh, relevance theory or ni is by including a debt the value of firm will increase this is proven next is overall cost of a capital will decrease now we calculate the overall cost of a capital so your overall cost of a capital ko equals to cost of debt times value of a debt upon value of the firm plus cost of equity times value of a common stock that is the market value of a common stock upon value of the firm so this equals to cost of debt is 10 percent 0 0.10 times value of a debt is 4 lakhs upon 9 lakhs that is the value of firm plus cost of equity is uh, 0.12 times value of equity is 5 lakhs upon 9 lakhs so this equals to 4 lakhs is 4 upon uh, 9 so this is 44 percent so instead of uh, doing all the zeros I extruded zeros so we got a 4 upon 9 so this is 0 0.10 times 0 0.44 plus 0 0.12 times 0 0.56 so this equals to 0 0.1 times 0 0.44 plus 0 0.12 times 0 0.56 so 11.12 that is 0 0.1112 or 11.12 percent is the overall cost of a capital in the previous case if you see the overall cost of a capital here is 11.32 11.32 and now this is 11.11 just we'll summarize this when firm has a debt of rupees 3 lakhs its value of the firm is 8 lakhs 83,333 so yeah 8 lakhs 83,333 and uh, the cost of a capital that is overall cost of a capital this equals to 11.32 now when a company has a debt of rupees 4 lakhs then the value of a firm has become 9 lakhs and overall cost of a capital become 11.12 percent so clearly this indicates that the value of firm increased whereas the overall cost of a capital decreased so this is the argument of net income approach in the sense when you use a debt which is a cheaper source in your capital structure mix you can increase the value of the firm simultaneously you can also minimize the overall cost of a capital but this argument in the sense uh, the net income approach will not consider the perception of investors it uh, makes an assumption that irrespective of the level of borrowing that you make whether you borrow 3 lakhs whether you borrow 4 lakhs or whether you borrow 50 percent of a debt 70 percent of a debt or 80 percent of the debt your cost of debt remains constant 
So that may not be true because uh, when the company borrows more and more amount, investors expect expected uh, return from a debt may increase. That assumption is not considered in net income approach. So net operating income try to answer this question in the sense uh, what will happen when a company borrows so more debt, what will happen to the perception of the investors and uh, what will happen to the cost of a debt. In my next lecture, I am going to explain you the concept of net operating income approach which is also called as irrelevant theory. Thank you. Thank you for taking participation.